Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. I cannot tell you how often people tell me that they are taking an NSAID, whether it's they're taking Advil or they're taking an ibuprofen or acetaminophen, which is Tylenol. It always just blows my mind how many people take a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug on a regular basis to target whatever ailment, um, whatever pain issue or swelling that they are experiencing. And remember, a lot of this can be averted just through proper diet. You know, our diet certainly adds insult to injury. So this is something that I want to discuss today when it comes to something that's been around for a really long time that is just fantastic when it comes to targeting inflammation as well as discomfort. So I'm going to talk about serapeptidase today. And this is long been utilized throughout many different European countries in particular for a very long time for its true benefit, which is it's very, very good at targeting inflammation in the body and it doesn't have those side effects that we know come with those non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So I'm Amanda Williams, MD, MPH, and oftentimes when people think about taking an anti-inflammatory medication Ooh. to relieve pain um, or perhaps, you know, they just think it's it's good for them to be on this type of, you know, over-the-counter drug, um, and there's a lot of different reasons as to why people think that, you know, maybe you have arthritis, maybe you have heart disease and you think you should be taking something to target inflammation, which in a sense is, is the right thought process, but we have to always look at counteracting the potential side effects. And we know that the long-term use of certain NSAIDs in particular can drive up a lot of problems. So when we're looking at you know, many of the things like ibuprofen, for example, we know that long-term use of that certainly can start to impact kidney health. When we look at long-term use of acetaminophen, we start to look at the long-lasting impact on the liver. But we know that there is something known as serapeptidase, and it also goes by the name. We usually um, shorten it just to serapeptase, but the serotiopeptidase is this proteolytic enzyme. And what that actually means when we say proteolytic enzyme is that it actually chops up or it digests different proteins and it is produced by bacteria. And this is something that has just shown to have this really enormous power to target inflammation, but it goes far beyond that because another thing that we know with serapeptidase is that it also can help to inhibit plaque buildup in the arteries. So I've talked about natokinase before, that fibrinolytic enzyme that comes from soy natto, that fermented natto. Well, serapeptidase is in that same kind of realm of how it's actually working in the body. So it's this very unique protein. It's derived from bacteria, and we know that it eases inflammation. It, you know, targets discomfort. So people who are in a lot of pain, oftentimes when they're using serapeptase, they see a tremendous, tremendous benefit from this. And so I want to talk about some of the scientific studies behind serapeptase and how it's working. So we know one thing that it's doing is that it is hitting the different inflammatory pathways. So where those different leukotrienes and cytokines are released. We also know that it is very focused on something called bradykinin. And this is where that targeting of the discomfort or the pain, that benefit comes from because it it is targeting or inhibiting that release of bradykinin. 
And then we also see how it is working on that cardiovascular level when it comes to being able to dissolve the fibrin. So remember, fibrin is a protein that as it builds up can create kind of a stickiness within the blood itself. So this is where that natokinase connection comes into play. So seropeptidase has been used throughout Europe as well as Asia for, oh gosh, probably 30, 40 years easily now because we see the benefit of this. So let's look at some of the the science um, on serapeptase. When you look at the scientific research, it, it is getting larger and larger on serapeptase because a lot of clinical research um, universities and research facilities are looking at different alternatives as opposed to having people continuously turn to NSAIDs. So the research is really starting to gain a lot of momentum in that setting of proteolytic enzymes. So hence bromelain and then obviously serapeptase. Now in the journal, and this is why I want to bring this up, because when we think about certain nutrients, sometimes we get tunnel vision. We think, okay, well, we've heard serapeptase is good for targeting inflammation and it's good for cardiovascular help for the, you know, building up of plaque. So it helps to prevent that. But this was in the journal of respirology. So hence respiration or lung function. This is all the way back in 2003, where they were looking at this proteolytic enzyme known as serapeptase and how this was widely used in clinical practice in Japan. And they were looking at how it may be beneficial for people who have chronic airway diseases. So people who have problems with breathing. And in giving them serapeptase, they found a significant shift in terms of the beneficial effect on even the the opening of the airways, the clearing of mucus that builds up and reducing the number of neutrophils. So when we think about why that happens, why you get that airway constriction, this was really a very advanced study that they did back in 2003. Now they've taken this to, to many different levels. They actually did studies roughly about five years after that, where they were looking at the benefit of serapeptase when it came to post-operative healing in dental procedures. Now we know bromelain has been studied in a very similar fashion um, for sinus surgeries, but we see how the proteolytic enzyme serapeptase was working at targeting the swelling, the pain, and just that wound healing process in general after having dental extraction, so having a tooth removed, and they found that when they gave them serapeptase, this reduced that post-operative swelling as well as the pain that was associated with this. They said there was a significant reduction in the swelling and pain intensity in the group that was given serapeptase. Now, this is an area, once again, where we start to see that crossing over of how something from nature, basically, the serapeptase is working along multiple different biological pathways in the human body. So in the Biotechnical Reports Journal in 2020, they said, well, let's look at all the different therapeutic applications at this point in time that we have seen when it comes to the use of serapeptase. We know that enzymes are, you know, certainly essential part of most metabolic processes within the body. So when you look at the different physiological functions such as digestion, metabolism, immune function, reproduction, respiration, we know that enzymes are essential for this. We think about our digestive enzymes, hence why bromelain is good for digestion as well as for targeting inflammation. And so when we're looking at the serapeptase, this is an area where they said, hmm, this particular proteolytic enzyme, it has a lot of different properties to it, one of which it contains zinc. So when we go back and we think about that wound healing aspect of serapeptase, this is where that really kind of pushes serapeptase into its own little category 
for that wound healing. So we know that it can target the pain as an analgesic. We know that it targets inflammation as an anti-inflammatory. We certainly see how it's working as that fibrinolytic when it comes to the cardiovascular system. And we see how it can, you know, take away that swelling. So when you even think about the um, edema that can be driven up in the human body. So within this particular journal, this is what they were looking at. They were looking at all of the different biochemical pathways to which serapeptase was working. So looking at that COX-1, COX-2 pathway, which is your cyclooxygenase pathways, and really seeing how potent the serapeptase is when it comes to easing that inflammation. Now they've done studies even in the setting of ulcerative colitis where you have extreme inflammation occurring within the intestines and have been able to show how the serapeptase can actually reduce the level of inflammation in those who have ulcerative colitis. They've done studies when it comes to osteoarthritis, when it comes to postoperative pain, when it comes to um, even skin health, for example. There was a real interesting study showing how combining serapeptase along with traditional um, drugs that are given for people who have acne, that when they added in that serapeptase, they got a significant improvement over time. So we know that there are many different ways in which serapeptase certainly can have many different functions to it, um, working to target biofilms that are brought on because of different bacterias or parasites, for example, and how it can actually modify the virulent types of those bacterial biofilms that start to build up over time as a bacteria starts to take over. So understanding the role of serapeptase when it comes to the resolution and in inflammation, um, this is you know, probably the the strongest area of research, really understanding how it is that the serapeptase is working along those exact same pathways that your NSAIDs do, but it is not creating those side effects, plus you're getting those added benefits for the wound healing, for the cardiovascular benefits. So at the end of the day, when we are thinking about different nutrients to add in, this is Um, found within our natokinase plus formulation. So we know that the natokinase, that's that fermented soy um, product. And then when you combine that with the serapeptase, this is a very, very strong proteolytic enzyme formulation that does far beyond that of just supporting the, the health of our circulatory system, our blood vessels. It goes far beyond that because we now know that we are gaining that benefit when it comes to the targeted inflammation pathways, as well as when it comes to wound healing and aiding in the body along all of those different biochemical pathways. So I certainly encourage you to check out that formulation. It's called natokinase plus, and it is a combination of natokinase along with serapeptase. So that is all that I have for you for today. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. Remember, you can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com slash podcast. Do make sure that you subscribe and you leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we will see you next time for another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. (music) 